Uh, today we have Helen McEntee here with us, uh, Minister of State for European Affairs in Ireland. Helen, thank you very much for coming. Thank you very much for you. being with us. I have uh, two short but very important questions for you here. Uh, what are the Irish priorities for the future of Europe debate? So this is the debate that I think has um, particularly taken shape in the last year and a half or two years, um, not least because of Brexit, but because of our changing world and changing environment. Um, and it's something that we have um, begun to discuss with our citizens at home, but also among our political circles within our government agencies, our uh, departments, with our ministers, and the direction that we want Europe um, to go. And I think it's extremely important for us that Europe continues to be relevant in the lives um, and people's daily lives as well. And so um, we've asked people a number of key questions. Um, we've focused on a number of key areas. So how can we ensure that moving forward we have a union that is competitive, that is sustainable? How can we ensure that we have a union that is safe and secure, that is prosperous? How can we ensure we have a union that is socially responsible, that we look after and support the people um, that need support and help? And also how can Europe adapt in a world that is changing, that is becoming more globalised? And for us, the, the clear message from people in our country is that people want to see uh, a union that is fair. Um, they want to see intergenerational fairness where um, our younger people are given all of the opportunities that they should have to be able to live, to work, to study at home or to travel and to do all of those things abroad, um, that our older generation should be catered for, should be looked after. Um, and I think key to all of this as well is education. Um, the message that you should be educated and people have the opportunity to be educated uh, throughout their lives and to be able to adapt and to change to that changing environment um, is an underlying message. And I think to achieve a lot of that and from a, a European perspective, how do we um, create that economic environment for people to be able to, 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 to work and to do all of the things that they want to do. Um, a number of key issues are um, the completion of the single market, um, particularly in the area of goods, uh, in the area of services and the digital single market. From an Irish point of view, uh, over 50% of our exports are in the area of services and, and we know um, how this can, can significantly add um, to our overall GDP, but the overall GDP and growth of the European economy and I think the more our economy grows at a European level the more money we have to invest in a lot of the key social issues as well um, the more support we have to address some of the larger concerns like uh, climate change like migration like the the um, posing threats uh, to our own security to our safety to our health and our welfare so these are all of the key issues that have been coming up uh, in terms of our engagement and obviously not just at home but in terms of our engagement with our European colleagues uh, and neighbours and friends and, and there's a lot more as well but for us it's about making sure that Europe is relevant um, in people's lives, it's about making sure that we communicate what Europe is doing, that we continue to engage with people um, and we make sure that it's a Europe that people are proud of. Yeah, as you have already said, all these important uh, issues are on the table, but we can't still convince all of our citizens to follow the same European agenda. So how we can address anti-European sentiments in European societies? But, you know, I think you're right. Europe can't be all things to all people, but what it can be is better. Um, and it can try to address the concerns that people have, or we as a union can try to address. Um, and I think first and foremost we need to listen to people. So in Ireland we've conducted a series of citizens dialogue and engagement um, and these were open for everybody to attend and certainly at the various different discussions we had people with different views, with different opinions, some who were very critical of the European Union, some who were critical of the institutions, some who were critical of the direction that we were moving in. And for me what was important as Minister and, and as somebody who engaged and took part in the dialogues is that we listen to these concerns that we try and understand them um, and that we try and make sure that while not all of the issues can be addressed that we address as many of them as possible you know I think at the same time there are people who will never agree with the European Union and who will never agree with um, the idea that member states should come together should work together um, but I think the more that we engage the more that we highlight 
the significance and the importance of the European Union, then obviously the, the more that message will get out there. Europe, first and foremost, is a peace project, and I think that's sometimes forgotten as well. Yeah. It's something that we're very conscious of in Ireland, given the fact that through both Ireland and uh, our, the UK's shared membership of the European Union, we have been able to develop um, a peace between the North and South, um, which has existed for almost 20 years. And again, this is something that I think has helped um, Irish sentiment and the, the positivity towards Europe. Um, so I think engaging with people from a much younger age about what Europe is, why it was established, how it has evolved and how it has developed is something that we maybe need to do more of. Um, in that regard as well, from an Irish point of view, we have um, from probably the age of five, we have a program within most of our primary schools um, which is there to uh, tell young people about Europe, to encourage them to explore um, what it means to be European, what it means to be part of a wider community, to look at other communities now currently living in Ireland as well and uh, how we can actually um, ensure the people growing up that they see all of this and, and that they're part of that conversation and that it's an open an honest conversation, one that maybe we haven't always had. Thank you very much for all your ideas and for being in here in Madrid. Thank you, Helen. Thank you.